Zach again, NewtonTour.com, coming in and making a video for you today. I recently went to go visit the Ark Encounter. I took my two boys and we went through the new Ark Encounter. I have been to the museum before. I really wanted to go to the Ark and check that out and see it. Uh, plus, I wanted to get some of the new books, the Answers books. I got three and four. Um, I already have one and two. And um, I had heard about this book, too, before I left, the Will They Stand. Uh, we'll talk about more about that in a second. But anyway, um, while I was there, I went there with an agenda. Let me just be honest, okay? I went there with an agenda because I wanted to see if they ever addressed Genesis chapter 7, verse 2. If I'll show you that in a second. But there is a gigantic error at the new Ark Encounter. Someone needs to call up Ken Han, get him on the ringer, and be like, Hey, Ken, Kenny boy. You have a giant error at this Ark Encounter. I mean, it's huge. <laughs> I just, I, every time I see this, and, and, and Answers in Genesis is the really the place I see it the most because they place so much emphasis on the Ark and the Flood. All, all the things I think they do wonderfully. I love it. I love it. You know, but there's a giant error in, in their presentation. Huge, huge error. Um, and that is this. When you go back and you look throughout their, all of their stuff, everything you go in there and you look at, they only, when they present the animals that go on the ark, they only present them two, male, female, male, female. But that's not what scripture says at all. In fact, when you go into, before you get to the ark, you see, here's a picture of us right before we're getting to go into the ark. And then you're walking towards the ark and you see a number of animals, these green, like they're plant animals that have been carved, I guess, you know, with a chainsaw, into different shapes of animals. And there's a there's two giraffes. The giraffe is a clean animal according to scripture. It has split hoofs and chews the cud. There wouldn't be just two of them. Let's go ahead and take a look at the verse. All throughout the ark and its displays, you see verses like this, Genesis 6, verse 19, Of every living thing of flesh, two of every sort, shall you bring into the ark to keep them alive with you. They shall be male and female. Okay, that's Genesis 6, 19. And then after uh, that, Genesis 6, 20, Of fowls after every kind, of cattle after their kind, of creeping thing after, of the earth after his kind, two of every sort shall come unto thee to keep them alive. And this is the verse they use over and over again that I've seen, you know, inside their display. Now, I didn't go through and look at every single display they had set up. I tried to. I, I was looking for this. I had my radar up. But they never go into chapter 7. Chapter 7, which because 620, 619, 620, it's at the very end of chapter 6. Chapter 7 gives much greater detail of what Noah, Noah was supposed to bring on the ark. Let's read the verse. Genesis 7, verse 2. Of every clean beast... You shall take to thee by sevens, the male and his female, and of every beast that are not clean, by two, the male and his female. So, clean animals, unclean animals. Fourteen, because seven pairs, by sevens, that means seven pairs, male and female, seven males, seven females, fourteen animals of one kind, and then two, just two, one, two. Of the unclean kinds. You don't see this anywhere. They don't present this verse anywhere. And I'm suspecting, come on, they don't want to, they, they know there's controversy here. You know, me and Answers in Genesis have gone, you know, what was his name? Tim Ch Chafee or Chaffee over at Answers in Genesis had mentioned me before in an article as a footnote when he was attacking the Hebrew roots. But see, <laughs> the Hebrew roots will point to verses like this and be like, how come this verse isn't in your museum at all? Why, 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 why are you, why are you uh, ignoring this? They're ignoring it because it's uncomfortable. They understand that if there's clean and unclean animals, well, that leads to a very particular problem, because in Genesis chapter nine, when it says this, and the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth and upon every fowl of the air, upon all that moves upon the earth and upon all the fishes of the sea, into your hand are they delivered. Every moving thing that lives shall be meat for you or food for you, even as the green herb I have given you all things. Okay, now let's just do a little bit of critical thinking skills here. If you have 14 animals, let's just say cows. You have 14 cows and the journey is over. You get off the ark. If you eat one of them, it's no big deal. You've got 13 left. 
Okay, you can afford to eat a couple. It's okay. Because they're clean animals. <laughs> if you only have two piggies and you eat one of them, the pig's extinct. <laughs> the pig is now extinct. Thanks, Noah. Great, great job. Maybe that's what happened to the dinosaurs. Maybe Noah ate one of the dinosaurs. He kept eating the dinosaurs. He liked those Bronto burgers. I don't know. Maybe that's why the dinosaurs are now extinct because he ate one of them. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. He wouldn't have eaten a dinosaur. So, but my point is, you go through the whole arc and you don't see these verses at all. You see two by twos everywhere. Giraffes are a clean animal. They have a cloven hoof, okay? They have the, the split hoof and they chew the cud. Split hoof, chew the cud. They're a clean animal. They're kosher. You can eat those. There's only two of them in their display. If they were being scripturally correct, scripturally accurate, there would be 14 giraffes and only two piggies, two hippopotamuses. I think they have elephants there too coming on the ark. And everyone would come out, come, would, would, coming out to the ark would be like, so why do you have 14 giraffes there and only two elephants? Well, let me give you a chance to show you some scripture. This is what the Bible says. See, they're missing an opportunity here. But see, they don't like this because Christianity has this man-made doctrine that the piggy is okay to eat. And boy, they don't like that. Guys, have you ever noticed that every time pig is mentioned in your Bible, it's used in the negative context? Every single time. There's a good clue. Good clue. I mean, <laughs> if you think about it, where did our Messiah put the demons? Into the pigs. Where was the, the prodigal son when he realized how big of a mistake he made? He was eating with pigs. Every single... What happens to the people who are slaughtered when our Messiah comes back in Isaiah 66? Oh, they're eating pigs. Every time pig is mentioned in the Bible, it's used in the negative context. But Christianity, they love their ham sandwiches. And so they will forego the mentioning of Genesis chapter 7, verse 2, because it makes their position very uncomfortable and being able to explain that away. <sighs> Regardless, I had a fantastic time at the Ark. I would encourage everyone to go see it. Um, it, was, it was phenomenal. They did a fantastic job in so many areas of it. Um, and uh, I definitely want to go back sometime. Uh, I want to go back and see the uh, museum again because their museum, one of the best parts I loved about the museum the last time I was there was the garden itself. The garden was absolutely phenomenal, fantastic. That itself is worth the price of going to see it. Um, so I want to go back and see that next time again. Um, there, there are books here. I have this one, Will They Stand?, this is, uh, Ken Ham put out a, a book the other, a uh, couple year, number of years back, and I have that one too on my, on my bookshelf, and that was um, already gone. And it was talking about how kids, when you basically, by the time they reach high school or college age, they're already gone because, they, you know, the education system is just waiting to sink their hooks into them and pull them out and just challenge them on what they have been taught in your Sunday school classes because they are not taught any apologetics whatsoever, whatsoever, including, you know, apologetics about, you know, 14 and 2 in Genesis chapter 7, verse 2. So, but it's the same thing. But, um, yeah, and, and this is kind of along the same lines, talking about, you know, how are your kids going to face the giants of, of the world that's out there, guys? Because it's increasingly becoming more and more aggressive towards your children. And, you know, you know that my Exodus series, in the second video of the Exodus, um, I make it a very clear point that the world is after your kids. Why is the enemy so far after your kids? Well, you'll have to watch episode two of my Greater Exodus series to find out why. But um, I make that case, and uh, it's, it's things like this that let me know that I'm on the right track. Will they stand? And kids today just have an increasingly hard time. That's why I homeschool, number one. And number two, um, you know, even as a single dad, I continue to homeschool. Uh, answers in Genesis, Answers number three and four. These are great books when it comes to apologetics. I've already got one and two, like I said before. And uh, these are great things for answer, giving kids the, question, the answers they need when they get questions from people out there in the world. When they eventually come to a point and they will be challenged over what they believe, why they believe it, uh, they can have an answer. You know, so for that, and that's one of the reasons I like the name Answers in Genesis. Be ready always to give an answer for every man that asks the reasons of the hope that's in us. Okay. Um, I hope Answers in Genesis. Ken, come on. I mean, 
I, I really enjoy your ministry, but come on, we got to fix this. <laughs> we got to fix this. You know, ham sandwiches. No, no. God says don't eat them. He does not change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. What is sin yesterday is sin today. And it's, he calls it an abomination. All right, we'll leave it at that. Go home. Read your Bible. Thanks.